to the cloud. Okay, so recording is on. Um, so, uh, you know what? I hear, I'm, I hear some, uh, can you guys mute yourself? Yeah, and then when we'll start talking, just because I can hear some uh, crackling in the back, and then when we answer the questions, we can all go together. So let's do the inner senses review, just so that we, we remind, we, you know, remember the topic a little bit. Then we'll go to thought. Did anybody read it? You can put, did you read it? Yeah, you read it, you read it? No, no, okay. <laughs> Wait. Elizabeth, you gotta mute yourself. <laughs> Or Eva. Uh, I keep getting cut off. Oh, it keeps disconnecting. Okay, okay. No, we just. Uh, so uh, if I disappear, that's probably why. Just come back. Just come back on. Okay. Uh, and yeah. I, so let, let's finish. Let's start with the inner senses, and then we'll go to thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts before we delve into thoughts. <laughs> okay. So the uh, inner senses, and so we've got these 14 uh, words that we can put into the paragraphs. Uh, and guys, you can unmute to speak out. Just if if one of you, you if we hear too much of a, a, a noise, then we'll just mute, mute. You know, we'll just be more careful at turning on our mics and off. But we'll try it. Okay. So get ready, and then we'll answer them. So I'll read the paragraphs, and then when I get to the the a question a pause and wait to see who answers first okay according to the philosophy of the Damanhur school when mankind received the divine spark it also received some additional potential which can be expressed as a series of new senses that we define as the inner senses sense of the divine <laughs> <laughs> no, Beth is right, Lena, no, <laughs> it's the inner senses, inner senses. Uh, those are, okay, we'll keep going and then you'll see why. In fact, their function is not to receive as our normal senses do, is not to receive external signals. External. Okay, yes, bravo, external signals as our normal senses do, but to receive signals from within. In essence, from our, Lina. Uh, sense of the divine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was gonna be right eventually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, so Elisa, you're connecting again. Uh, okay. Um, then, um, our divine, potential is expressed through these senses through these inner senses unfortunately due to battles lost to the enemy where we were lobotomized we lost all but how many of these inner senses five bravo 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 good job good job okay now the first one we're going to talk about is the sense of the divine uh, the sense is the closest to our awareness since it was found to be the most important. If we were to remember our da, 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 divine da, origin, human primordial divinity. Oh, okay. Close, close. Uh, this sense represents our possibility of extending our consciousness beyond form and make contact with our origin. Uh, oh, sorry, 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 guys. Uh, this is the human primordial divinity. Mm -hmm. So the first one was divine origin. And this one is human primordial divinity. Does that make sense? Yeah. You guys want me to read that over? Or you got it? Give me it's a thumbs, thumbs up. Good. Thumbs up? Thumbs up? Shana, yes. Okay. okay. So uh, this sense represents our possibility of extending our consciousness beyond form and make contact with our origin, the human primordial divinity. This is why mankind throughout the ages felt the need to create divinity. 
Yeah, Beth, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you because you're answering all the questions. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I just, I, uh, the rest of you, are you okay? I know, Beth is, yeah, you're all good. You're all, these are all newbies, Beth. <laughs> Beth. Beth is my compatriot in the meditation school. So we hear this on a regular basis. <laughs> no, no, I don't want to mute you, Beth. We like to hear you. I just wanted to, you know, I'm just going to ask you, take five seconds before you respond, okay? You can respond, but take five seconds. So you can unmute, but... <laughs> Uh, so because this sense function is complete, is incomplete, because this sense function is incomplete, this sense of the divine, it has caused us to misuse and lose control of the divine forces we have created over the ages. And as we study further in the book, we talk about the triad operation, we'll, under we'll understand more what this is about. Okay, so important. The choice by mankind's representative to hold on tightly as possible to this sense more than any of the other was determined by the fact that only a function of this kind would allow mankind to find its path again after being lobotomized. So that's why the sense of the divine was kept. Um, it was important and we can understand why if we don't, un you know, if we don't feel we have belong to something greater than ourselves, we wouldn't search for, uh, for that outside of ourselves. So then the next is the sense of dreaming. Dreams will generally manifest on different levels with correspondingly different functions. We have simple dreams where our minds recognize and elaborate the events of our day. Dreams that extend beyond our perception to other points in time. Dreams in which we actually leave our body to travel planes of other planes of reality and rarer dreams that access the... Okay, unmute yourself, people. Threshold. <laughs> Threshold. Threshold. Bravi, bravi. Okay. Um, and, and this is really important because the threshold is... Um, really giving us a very good taste of the real, uh, our, our most accurate sense of what the real could be like, okay? So this is a really potent experience for us if we can go there. Uh, in the, uh, okay, in the threshold, we interact, oh, wait, 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 wait sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. When we refer to the sense of dreaming, we are refer referring to the rarer dreams where we access the threshold. So the sense of dreaming is the dreams that we experience when we are connecting with the threshold, these rarer dreams. So that's what this sense is about. This sense allows us to perceive reality at the threshold. <laughs> it's just to, re just to repeat it. So, uh, so perception not of form, but of information is felt by way of our emotional channels. So in the threshold, we are not going to, um, the only way we are, what is available uh, for, let me say that again, at the threshold, our emotions is what gives us the information, not anything else can help us understand the threshold. So it's our emotions, that will dictate how we communicate and perceive communication in that realm, okay? In the threshold, we interact with the, this is really important, the primeval laws in their true nature. And they generate in us a specific sensation and emotion. Mm. We discovered, yeah, we discovered that each law generates its own specific sensation and emotion that can be either positive or negative, depending on our own interior energetic state. So realize that in the sense of dreaming, where we are in the threshold, 
we communicate through our emotions and we perceive through our emotions because that's how the primordial laws communicate with us through our emotional states. And we're going to realize how important it is that we are healthy in our emotional states so that this, this emotional exchange we have with them is positive and not negative. Because if we are depleted in our emotional states, uh, we are going to perceive them negatively and not positively. So it's based on that. And they talk, we'll go to the next step and then I'll just review it. So, so in the threshold, we interact with the primeval laws in their original state. So we are having an experience with the real uh, in their true nature and they generate in us specific sensations and emotions. We discover that each law generates its own specific sensation and emotion that can be either positive or negative, depending on our own inner state. This is also important. These laws also have a very specific connection to our... Chakra. Very good. Chakras. The way we, this is the important part, the way we experience the sensation and emotion, either positive or negative of the law in the threshold depends if our reservoir, I made a mistake here. I gave you, there's no, there's no question. It depends if our reservoir is full or depleted. What this means is our chakras, and many of us here have done work with energy our chakras being cleared or our chakras being full. Well, guess what? In the threshold, when we are meeting these laws in their purest form, if our chakras are depleted of energies, we are not gonna perceive, we're gonna perceive them negatively because the emotion that's going to be experienced by us will be negative. If we're full in our chakras, we're going to experience the emotion positively and in the book uh, there is a chart that it shows you what each chakra represents um, uh, and which law um, and depending on the emotion uh, and I'll show you the, the, the thing it's on page 133 so, so there's a couple of things with all of this. You see the precision of everything that we are made of, how it all w is connected together in a very perfect shape uh, and system. So these prim primeval laws that we get a chance to experience in the threshold uh, have a frequency to them, and those frequencies match our chakras. And depending on the energy, uh, on, the, on how those chakras are, our chakras, it determines the experience we have in the threshold. Now that's great when we're just dreaming, but if we're passing on and we don't have our reservoirs balanced, we're going to literally be in hell in the threshold till we come back and incarnate. So everything we can do to prepare for death, uh, to rebalance or fill up those reservoirs is going to be really, really beneficial. So you see in this, the wisdom of all these traditions where they prepare people for death, you know, they have doulas for death. So it's really important. So um, I wanted to make sure that everybody remembered this part. And in Dam and Her, uh, because they study this, they understand this, um, they, uh, they live, they, they, through, they associate with each of these chakras also actions that they can do in their life to make sure that these reservoirs are full. And they call them, this is the next question, um, it's in the note. Um, uh, and the answer is, Quesito. Quesito is, the concept of Quesito is a very important one in Damaner. It is something be, midway between a question and a quest. 
and is a formula of action and continuity that is the basis for Damaner's development and the growth of its citizens. There are eight quesiti. The first regards action followed by continuity of action, interior transformation, interior stabilization, mutation, creation life, and, and so on. And that's also on that page. What these quesitos are, remember we talked about uh, the chakras and how each chakra is attached to one of the laws that is met in the threshold. The quesitos are actions that can be taken for each chakra to make sure that your reservoir is full when you go to the threshold. So guys, I just wanna, is that clear? Does that make sense? Yeah. So go to page 133 for those of you that have the book. If not, I can send you a, a copy. Does it, do, you guys, do you guys want a copy of it? Should I send it to you? This one? Or do you guys all have the book? You all have the book. Yeah. Eva, you have the book, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. It's on page 133. So you'll see that, you know, they have the law. They have what the action, the quesito. Uh, that they take to make sure that that reservoir is full, what chakra it belongs to, and the meanings. You know, if you are in a positive state, you're happy. If you're in a, a not positive, if you are full in that reservoir, you experience love. If you are depleted in that reservoir, you're going to experience hate. So, so it's important that these reservoirs um, are full. Yeah, I wanted to make sure we reviewed that one because that's important. Right. The next um, answer is is the sense of is the sense in this sense the world. Oh, I can't tell you. Okay, what's the answer for number three at the top? It gives it away. <laughs> sense of desire. Okay. Very good. Yes, yes, yes. So this is the third sense. In this sense, the world desire does not so much represent the common desire that we might have in life, which are often induced by the environment in which we live, but rather an internal drive that takes us in certain directions, or at least it will if we are tuned to the right signal. One desire in particular represents our soul's mission or the goal our soul must reach in the world of form. Pursuit of this desire can give true completion and satisfaction. This desire is directly linked to one of the 163 alchemical elements we represent. Using this sense, this is important because I, I think most of us have felt when we do something completely in line with who we are and what we need to do, we feel it inside. Well, look at what happens. Using this sense generates circuits inside our soul's structure. These are the lines of strength and follow us through our various existences. These lines are also directly connected to the expression of our vital energy and are very important instruments for interacting with synchronicity. They can work like magnets pulling in wanted events and pushing away unwanted negative ones and i'm just going to take a moment and maybe you guys can share where you know you have been totally in line with what you need to be doing and you can just feel it and it's like a this kind of euphoric feeling inside you're like yes yeah just give me a thumbs up if you felt that one thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, so that's the sense of, the, of, of, um, of desire. That's what that is about. We want a lot of that in your life. <laughs> okay, and the sense of memory. Uh, this is interesting. Um, we might get glimpses of this. Uh, and those of us that, yeah, we might get glimpses of this when déjà vus or you go somewhere and you're like, I've been there before. Um, I've, yeah, so the sense of memory. Memory here refers to our becoming aware 
of our past lives and viewing them from an eyewitness perspective with the ability to interact as we do with our normal present. This allows us to experience what we discussed in the chapter of time referred to the eternal present. This sense is only available to souls that have reached a certain level of evolution, what we refer to as enlightened. Uh, I also believe, I mean, I don't know, uh, but I know that I've heard for many people and also I've had some experiences where you've gone somewhere and Beth, I remember when we were in Egypt, I think many of us were like, I've been here before, you know? Some people might have gotten that uh, in other places or experiences you've had. Uh, and I think that that's, yeah, yeah. And you know that when that happens, you feel very different inside. You feel like you filled out a part of yourself. It can be really potent. So that's the sense of memory. And the next one is fun. Uh, and this is the sense of blank. This sense makes it possible for us to have memories of experiences and events that were not lived personally by taking them from other individuals. So what is that one? This is... Change. Yes, 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 yes. The sense of exchange. Uh, note, this is a way to enrich our life experiences by being able to share what others are living and are able to do. And remember, I gave you that example where I have a girlfriend of mine that uh, we say sometimes about each other, I'm going to channel my inner Alessandra if she needs to behave like me. Because uh, <laughs> I'm a little rough sometimes. And she's gone to charms at school. So I often say, I'm going to channel my inner Heather when I need to behave a little bit more proper. <laughs> so that's inner senses. Yay, guys, any questions? Anything that's, that's, that you want to share? Elizabeth, Eva, Lina? Nope. Um, I think it's awesome you create these, uh, this uh, review. Because... Mm. Um, I don't keep it in my memory because it's in the book. So uh, it's good to, and, and each page seems, has so much depth. You know, when you pull out two questions from that page, you know, it's so much information. So thank you for that. Oh, well, I, I, you know, I know sometimes it might seem a little bit mundane, but it how because these concepts are so new to all of you, the review just brings them home. And then it just takes it a little bit deeper. And then we get to play with them a little bit more. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have to share something, something with all of you. I'm really stoked. I'm actually very stoked. Um, the, I was at dinner with our dear friend Cha Cha a few weeks ago. We were celebrating COVID in our own way. With, Anyways, it was fun. Uh, and uh, uh, be, uh, do, do any of the friends of Chachas know Suzanne? No, you might not know Suzanne. No, no. So Suzanne has all these students from Latin America. And there's a young guy at the table. And he's a radio producer from Colombia. But he's here now. And it's like, I'm doing podcasts. And he's looking for work. And I said, I've got a project. I've got these YouTube channel, YouTube videos that we do on, on this topic. That's fabulous. I would love to have put, condense them, make them, you know, really potent and produce them. So he goes, yeah, I can do that for you. So I'm producing a podcast with all of these calls yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to, so they're going to be, I'm going to take the best of the discussions with summaries at the beginning and at the end. I'm not going to make each episode will be about 30 minutes, 30 minutes. So you can review these. They'll be, uh, able, you'll be able to have them on a podcast. It was. It. I have to share with you. It has been from the original December. So this is. We're going on to month seven now, and I have to share. Re-listening to the podcast and what we were talking and what we talk about today, the best way I can describe it to you is. We sounded like bubbling dum dums. 
because because at the beginning we knew only this much, right? And and so we could only articulate in this, you know, in, in this kind of frame. And now we know this much. <laughs> It's not much, but it's, and so these concepts that we took hours to discuss, like, they're so simple now because we have so much more data, but so it was, it's been very humbling to go back and listen to ourselves. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And he's like, I, go, I gotta make this sound good. I don't know how I'm gonna make this sound good. <laughs> because we have evolved, we've grown. And usually we don't go back and hear our conversations that we've had six months ago. We just continue on. But now that it's, you know, distilled in a frame and you go back and hear it, you're like, it's not possible. It's not possible I sounded like this and I was talking like this. <laughs> so needless to say, you are all being uh, captured in a moment of time in your brilliance at that moment in time. <laughs> <laughs> which may be different than your brilliance at today's moment in time. <laughs> so that's my, that's my story. So as soon as I get the, uh, the first few episodes done, as soon as I think in two weeks we'll start, I'll send you guys the links and you can uh, listen to them and absolutely give me any feedback. But it's going to be fun, a fun project that we're doing. That's my COVID, you know, project <laughs> that's Ooh, happening. Good one. Oh, the, the, the podcast, the podcast. Uh, so now, so uh, I want to ask before we go to this, who read the chapter on thoughts? Right. Okay. What would you like to say before I start? I'm going to ask you, can you say a few words? So who, Sarah, you start. Okay. Well, I love the idea that there are rivers of thought that travel through our collective consciousness and it makes perfect sense. Yeah. And especially at this time, watching the wave of thought moving across the planet and how it's controlling movement and action and behavior. And yeah, it really has me wondering who's putting what into the river of thought these days. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good, mm -hmm. hold that one. We're going to talk about that one. Yes. Yeah, that's and cool. Great, great. Yeah. And Cindy, do you want, Cindy, I'm just going to go to the top row. Do you want to share something? Do you have anything you want to say about thoughts? You didn't read it. Okay, no. Uh, Beth, I'm going to wait for you last. Let me see. Shana, do you want to say something about it? Or no. Duncan? No. I haven't read it yet. I'm afraid to say anything now. Okay. I'm going to be in a podcast. <laughs> so I will only speak British from now on because I don't like my Canadian accent. So thank you very much. Duncan, I promise I only take the best pieces. I only take the best pieces. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Elizabeth, would you want to say something? I want to know where thoughts come from. Okay. That's a good, that's a good point. We're going to talk about it. I it, think it, it's at the end of the chapter. Yeah, that and part is really cool. <laughs> and, uh, and can I also mention that it, I've also heard that, you know, when the Wright brothers created the first airplane, that yes. someone else was creating one on another side of the world. I'd heard yeah. that. So that really reinforces that idea that thought flows and consciousness is shared across the planet. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Yes, Lena. And um, it's the one who takes action. The Wright brothers yeah. took right action. <laughs> That's kind of a pun there. That. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, created complexity, had enough complexity, right? Yes. They got enough investors and they got enough attention that they were able to push that through. Well, you are going to, we're going to, I'm going to point out the importance of action. Uh, this is going to be key to impacting the material world, action. Thoughts alone can't do it. You need the action. 
okay and that and we're gonna make that a, a much i'm gonna pontificate that like it's gonna it's in the it's in the pages yeah then we'll do eva and then beth we get to do you last <laughs> eva any comment well you know i'm just thinking about thought and years and years and years ago, I had this dream and it was over and over. It was really weird. I dreamt that people were skating on the road. This is before um, those wheel, wheel skates came on. Oh. And I, you know, it was in my dream. These people were like skating on ice, but they were skating on the street like that. Yeah. And a few months later, the, the actual thing was discovered or developed or marketed. And I thought, wow. The so rollerblade. The so rollerblade. I, I was in, in the thought. I, I picked up the thought. And, cool. and but then it manifested in, the, in reality. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's, what it, that's how it works. We, we share the stream. We share the stream. Beautiful. Eva, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. And beautiful Beth, you are our final words. Give us your thoughts. <laughs> Give us your thoughts. <laughs> so I, I haven't read this in years, but I, I read, I got half of it read before tonight. But um, one thing, I'm a Diksha giver, or I used to be, I haven't done it in a while. But um, what, is that? what is that? Have you heard of Diksha? No. D, okay, it's, a, it's an energy transmission. Okay. There's a, a school in India that, um, anyway, it's a whole big thing. But okay. one of their um, tenants is, is, is thoughts are not mine. Right. And so it's like if, you, if you're in like a bad loop or you keep thinking negative thoughts or whatever, if you can just like step back and detach yourself from it you, you can just really actually see the stream of ah. thoughts going by you don't have to be attached to all of them and so right. it's very liberating right right so, okay um, i wanted to say that and then um yeah i had a dream a while back too about and it was this fully formed um story of vampires on the beach and blah 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 and it's like I saw the whole thing from beginning to end if I was a writer I would have made millions on these books because just like <laughs> J.K. Rowling knew all of Harry Potter you know before she started writing right fully formed and it's like I was just thinking the minute I woke up it's like wow I wish I was a writer because I would make millions <laughs> You, you pulled a creative idea right out of the yeah thoughts. it just dropped and um i mean and, and it was great so <laughs> if, I, if somebody writes it i will definitely recognize it so i just wanted to say that oh beautiful beautiful uh, okay so i have to share with you a little bit uh my this chapter was really hard for me uh because I, uh, I, you know, I'm, I, I like the human race. I, I feel good about it. You know, I think that we're pretty creative creatures and like we're pretty awesome, you know, when it comes to maybe other forms. Yeah, okay, we could have done some things better. And it was really hard for me to realize that not even thoughts are, are really ours, that we're just copying or elaborating from a higher source that's putting these thought waves in the stream that was really hard for me because i'm like like we don't even get to do that creative process like so that was really humbling and so i had to sort of it hit me like it was a little bit of a sucker punch you know i was like oh like here's another one of those things where yeah, it was just like a little bit like the soul and knowing that, you know, who I think I am is just a bunch of personalities trying to get together. And make it really nice. I'm like, even this, like, I can't even like my thoughts. I thought this is great. I'm making a podcast. Like, not even that. Sorry, I'm outside. So we've got the, we've got the chorus. Let me, let me go inside. <laughs>
Hold on, hold on, guys. Hold on. I'm going to take us back to the indoors. Here we go. So that was a little hard for me. Um, I took it very personal. <laughs> I was like, hmm. um, so that was my share for my thoughts. So I was like, oh, <laughs> this thing would hurt. <laughs> but, uh, and I also understood a little bit more uh, going through the chapter. And I know some of you just went through it. Uh, Beth, I've, I've gone through it a few times. I also understood a couple of things of, you know, Dam and her and what they're doing. I understand a little bit more why they live in community, um, not only for this thing with the soul and the different personalities so that they can have different people reflect things back to them, but the importance of living together uh, to exchange thoughts and to have high level discussions, just like what we are doing here. And the fact of action, putting the ideas that they are feeling like the Wright brothers, Lena and Sarah, into action because, and we'll go through it. So we cannot create or impact matter with our thoughts because we are only elaborating them. So in order for us to have an impact on the material world, we have to take physical action. So those were the two points that I want to start with, and then I'll take you through the, the book. Uh, but it was a very humbling topic for me. I have to share. Okay, so here it is. Thoughts. Okay, so it's important to know thought is what allows evolution uh, uh, it, it you know is what allows evolution all evolution of living forms without thoughts we are cavemen thoughts help us evolve and lead us to complexity without form without thoughts we don't exist thoughts are food for living forms. So I'm going to take you to the book and we're going to read some of the some of the the, the, um, the, in, the, um, the lines and paragraphs that I think are important. Uh, are you guys good? I'm good? Yeah. Ready? Ready for this dive? I feel like I put a, I, I, I put my negative, not the negativity, but my, like it, are you good? Like, I didn't want to take away from the excitement of, of thoughts, but it, it, this was really a hard topic for me. I, I really, I felt like I was, I was licking my, you know, I felt like I got humbled again, you know? <laughs> so, I don't want to humble any of you, you know? It's good to be euphoric. Okay, so, so we're going to start on page 137. Uh, and I want to just uh, read this because I think it's important. So, According to Damanhur philosophy, thought represents a form of energy that is distributed throughout the universe in, universe in the form of streams of currents. And while it is an indispensable element for the evolution of living form, it is not produced by them. The action that we normally define as thought must therefore be reanalyzed and reinterpreted accordingly. According to spiritual physics, to think means to produce thoughts, which means to create. In magic philosophy, thoughts create. The act of thinking creates, but producing thought is a faculty that mankind and the other living forms with which we share this plane of existence do not have. On our plane of existence, we can instead elaborate thoughts. So thoughts come from beyond. We can elaborate them. 
Remember when we talked about the demiurge, this, the world of ideas, the real breaks up into all these pieces, uh, and in that it creates the world of ideas. It's almost like the world of ideas is the same thing as thought. It's not coming from us, it's coming from a higher power. And then it's put into our ecosystem and then we can take those thoughts and elaborate them. So is that clear, you guys? Yeah. Yeah, Alina is a little humbled. I see what I mean. Like, isn't that, doesn't that hurt? Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. Well, it's elaborate. You know, every artist, everything's been done, but every artist interprets it. And that's exactly what we're doing. Articulates it in their own way. So elaborates. Yeah. It's already there. So I'm going to give you a little bit of hope of the fact that there is a little bit that we do in our lifetime, but not that much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now that we have this, okay, so, uh, so, we, so this is important. And then uh, what I want to take you to is, so now that we realize that we are not the ones creating the original thoughts, we're just elaborating them, uh, we are going to read the, the, the following section that talks about, uh, or let me just read you from my notes because I think this is, is, is enough. So, so, produce, so producing thoughts is an act of creation, which mankind and living forms don't have the capacity to do. That's on page 137. I've just taken excerpts of it and reading sort of from my notes. What we can do is elaborate thought. We actually have an ecosystem of elaborated thoughts that, that function like a food chain. Once we elaborate thoughts, they are transformed and suitable for species belonging to a different level. Now listen to this one. We have 40 levels below us and you know these levels are like, like the big fish, the little fish, they all feed on each other. And there is nine levels above us where non-material forms, divine forms are elaborating thoughts. And we're gonna read, and we are bridge forms. So we're in a very unique positions because we are elab elaborating thoughts and able to move them from the material world to the spiritual world. Okay, we, 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 you know, we, we get some, a pat on the back for, for the <laughs> We, we are a little bit, you know, we, we get something. And then I went to, I, uh, guys, I want to make sure, are you following me? Am I taking you, am I able to weave the, the web around? So if we go to page 138 at the bottom, uh, the last two part, yes. Do you mind saying what you just said before, that we are a bridge and we move thoughts from Yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to read it now. Um, so, so, the, so according to this uh, chapter, so we are elaborating thoughts and there is a whole food chain of this elaboration of thoughts. There are 40 le le levels below us. Yeah. And then there's us and there's nine levels above us. Because we are bridge forms, we are in a unique place like the nine levels above us because we have because we are bridge forms we have a foot in the material world and we also have a foot in the spiritual world so in this page 38 the last two chapters the last paragraphs according to our calculations there are 40 level preceding mankind and the thought elaboration chain each of which hosts a certain number of living species our form, being a bridge form, is in a special position because through our elaboration of thought, um, we transport thoughts from the material to the spiritual plane. 
Here we find another nine levels of thought elaboration done by non-material forms at higher and higher levels. These are forms that increase in level from paradivine to divine forms at the higher level. And they're not quite clear exactly what is above, but we find divine forces that are no longer, the higher we go, and this talks to where then do thoughts come from, we find divine forces that are no longer elaborating, but are actually directly producing thoughts. But that's not for 96% of our life, not us. <laughs> But we can still be the right brothers, you know, we can still be. <laughs> but, okay. So this means that they have the power to so these higher forms. And so where do the thoughts come from? This means that these higher forms that are able to actually create the thoughts um, have the power to create and their thoughts create uh, directly through the laws their work produces thoughts which will then be used or elaborated by the forms at the earlier stages in the thought evolution elaboration chain okay so i just want that to to be you guys comfortable with that so it seems that thought is really um a uh, something that's done at a very, very high level. Uh, we can elaborate them. Uh, and we are going to also talk about when we actually can create thoughts ourselves. It's only a very small percentage uh, in our lifetime. And we also are going to talk about why is that? Why can't we do more than that? And for that, we are you guys okay digesting that? Can you feel like it doesn't, yeah, anyway, it's, it, it's important to know. It's very humbling to know. Uh, so, we, so now we understand um, that we are elaborators of these. And now let's go to page 143, or let's go to page 144. Because we have to have some hope of, you know, being able to really create them. So on page 144, the second paragraph. So that said, in, that said, okay, in every individual experience, we can find moments, though they are very rare, in which such individual elaborate thought at a level hovering near true creation. Here we are referring to those rare moments in which free will is actually used. It is calculated that over the course of a human being lifespan in this day and age, there are about two minutes of actual time in which free will is used. <laughs> in that instant, we are able to create through thoughts because we are putting the power that heads up our divine part to work. Like, let that sink in, like, boo, like, can you feel that? Like, two minutes, guys. <laughs> in a lifetime? Yeah, we use our free will, two minutes. In a, oh, sorry? in a lifetime? I know, yes, Eva, in a wow. life. I, I know, it's, it's like being able to vote and you never vote. You know, like, it's just like, it's like, it's just, wait, 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 we got to change this. Like, what is, like, why? So that was, okay, so let me just read, it's, it's humbling, eh? Okay, this power of creation is seen particular in relation. Okay, well, no, let's not read the other one. Okay, so now let's ask the question: Why is the why is that? Why can we not access our free will more often? And it 
accessing our free will, because I know all of you feel that you are free individual, but here it's in black and white, and guess what? You're not. We're all working mm -hmm. from programs. So let's go back. This book is so humbling. Page 143. <laughs> the second to last paragraph. Why are we only using our free will two minutes out of a whole lifetime? Okay. And this is things we know, but we don't realize how they imprint us. So, so they talk about, we will begin with the concept of rivers, which according to the Dam and her philosophy are the principal form of conditioning that every individual is subject to and which are composed of instinct, place of birth, the environment in which we are raised and formed, and of course, our interaction with others, parents, teachers, and friends in particular. Individuals will nearly always react to stimuli with an action conditioned by these factors rather than based on a neutral evaluation of the present. This is one of the elements that separates us from thought. If we could exclude these forms of conditioning, we should be much closer to being able to access the power of thought. So, ladies and gentlemen, do your inner work. Break from the molds that bind you. No, it's, you know, because I don't know about you guys, but I want to be putting my thoughts into, like, I don't want to just elaborate thoughts. I'd rather think that I got some original stuff happening. Like, <laughs> I just want to say. <laughs> oh. So I just wanted to leave you with that. Mm -mm -mm. Let me see if there's oh, anything else. Oh, Alessandra, yes. so then that, how this will have an effect that we don't have any free will. Sorry? We don't have free will. No, Bella, the free will is sitting right in front of your nose, is that we don't know how to use it because we act 96% <coughs> of the time from our conditioning. Who from we, our programming. From our programming, our childhood, our experiences in life, everything. So to be authentic is, and to really be free of all that we have used to identify ourselves is uh, is interesting. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's interesting. Like to have an original moment of who we are is very interesting. He gives the key here. It's okay. neutrality. A new, yeah. Neutral evaluation of the present. Where, Where are you, Ben? Where are you? Uh, 143, last, second last paragraph, actually. Okay. Jewels. So it's about neutrality is the key. If we can observe our life from a point of neutrality, we're, we have oh, yeah, yeah. to create from, with our thoughts. So neutral evaluation of the present. Okay, guys. That's it right there is the key, neutrality. Neutrality. Very high frequency, you know, on the scale of emotions. It's, it gives, it takes us into a position of power. Oh. Oh. What? Oh, I had an experience of neutrality. <laughs> Do yeah. tell. Uh, okay, um, this is fascinating. So I had a confrontation. Okay, so a situation happened that really didn't feel good. And I was gonna react right away. I was gonna like take it head on. And instead I had my emotional, <sighs> slept on it, woke up in the morning and was very clear, no, okay, I can't change the situation because it's in motion, but I can uh, uh, ask for the things I need 
in this environment. You know, I can be neutral and clear. So I presented my three, four points. It was really five lines, one, two, three, clear, no emotions. And, but I said my piece, which was something, um, I, I, I said my piece in a very clear, no charge kind of way. So I was neutral, I stayed neutral. The unraveling that happened in front of me was fascinating. I saw this person backtrack two, three emails. It, it didn't impact me at all because all I had to say, well, uh, this is what we agreed on. I just stood back. They completely unraveled. I wasn't upset anymore because I had that. And I was in neutrality. I was neutral. Not that I didn't have the break the emotional break before but when i came to my action i was neutral and i had no more emotion around and i acted totally different than i ever would have acted before yes it qualifies so what happens to me did i have a, a, a creative thoughts that i put into the scene <laughs> but but may i offer something as well yes uh, a friend of mine taught me a statement that has uh, stayed with me, and it's that all energy in the universe is neutral mm. and can be accessed from the unbiased perspective. Yes. Mm. Oh. So when we stay out of judgment from emotion of goodness or badness, then we can access the neutrality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can act and use that without creating any charge for anybody else or for ourselves. Do you um, mind saying that again? Is it Sarah? Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I can't see everybody. Do you mind saying that again, Sarah? Sure, it's all energy in the universe is neutral and can be accessed from the unbiased perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And as far as this goes, uh, you know, free will and original thought, I guess it's saying that we interpret everything through the context of everything we bring with us from our past. So everything that is, we have lived has shaped the goggles through which we're looking at life. And that's why we can't really, that's why we're under the influence of that at all times. But then when we were talking about time, weren't we talking about the future existing and reaching back and creating us now? So perhaps that's the reason why there's no free will is because we're, we're being created from our future or you know, time as a field instead of a line. We're not being created from our past. So. Wait, wait, uh, say that again. Say that again, hold on, hold on. I, I, I think I understood you, but I, yeah, so, because you think, okay, it, I'm going to try to say it in my understanding. So, mm -hmm. you think that free will is also a bigger limit because we are living on all these multiple timelines. So, we're having these controlled experiences everywhere. Mm hmm so then if we are able to have original thought and exercise free will, then it affects all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So stay with that because think of how potent the consciousness of the present moment is for us. If we can access our free will, we impact all those timelines. It works both ways. Yeah, it's powerful. So we want to be very present and accessing and feeling mm -hmm. all the time because we would we would have access. Yeah, and it's very possible that we are limited. Uh, but let let's think about that. No. Uh, okay. Hold on. Hold on. When. The timeline that we are on right now and the one we're conscious of is 
the most potent one or the most important because the consciousness stays here but we can have multiple experiences right we're okay mm -hmm. with that one so if right now i'm also in egypt and i do something potent in okay do i impact here or i can only impact my consciousness here beth you're, you please tell me what are you thinking whatever you're doing in any timeline it's changing the whole timeline okay you're sure about that? i understand it okay lena yeah. yes. you're affecting anything you do in the present whether you're in the future present or the past present since we're living all these lives at the same time there's right. only one now supposedly everything changes so even if i'm in atlantis no let's say in egypt right now okay. then and i discover something that's going to make a change it would impact it would impact me you if too. you do it with presence it's the thing yeah. is from what i understand we're living all of our lives now <laughs> yeah so <laughs> so anything you do with presence would affect you in all the timelines does that make sense yeah and do you think then so if we grow here, if we evolve here, we're also going to evolve there. Absolutely. Okay, so we don't have to get too caught up in trying to make our life better in Egypt, as long as we're doing it here in the present moment. Do it where you're focused. I mean, yeah. that's, that's all you can do. So right. like in, in my life here now, as, as me right here, I can only change my right. now with neutrality. Right. So, you know, in a neutral moment. Okay. Yes. And then that okay. will, you know, domino backwards and forward. Right. Lena, I can see. Lena, unmute yourself because you were, she's like, ah! yes. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, and I see it here in the notes at 144, page 144, right exactly where the 144 is. Uh, those two minutes of actual time that our free will is used. Um, we're able to create through thought because we are putting the power that heads up our divine part to work. So I always, in my terminology, I work with the high self, which is connecting with the universe and part of the divine and yeah. like inter in interfacing there. So this is saying we want to interface with our divine part and then our thoughts have can create and our free will is has potential yeah uh, but the, the neutrality is the key you can't access the divine if you're not in the neutral state yeah yeah being neutral like sarah was saying is the uh, neutral is the key yeah but yes go ahead yeah but you're going to do what you explained your anecdote. You will more than likely do it again because you know how well it worked and you will remember. You will have other moments like that in your future, which is more than two minutes. So what's with the two minutes? Uh, it's got to be something like, yeah, you're talking to God. Like, like Lena was saying, it's, to, it's not like you're going to, talk to whoever it is, the creator, whatever you want to call it, uh, unless you're saving the planet or something that we can't even fathom because it's only two minutes of, you know, 80, 90, 120, whatever it is, years. So it just leaves me with a whole bunch of more questions. What the heck? <laughs> Two minutes. So, two, two minutes. Two minutes of free will. I, well, I always said this, you know, no, not always said this. When I started to do psychotherapy and work like that, I always, I remember a moment where I go, oh my God, I'm on stage. And I've got a script for me and I got a script for everybody else. And then I would go around and say, okay, what script am I playing in your play? 
it's like, like, what? like it's all scripted like we're just acting out uh, but you do know you like when when i did this thing very recently and i acted out of my script i was really neutral after the big emotional upheaval i went through i was neutral i was very it was a very different feeling. And I can tell you that the reaction that I witnessed for a couple of days, no, probably a week, was wild because I had no charge and I was just observing it. So I have never lived from neutrality. So if you tell me that there's only two minutes where I can access real free will because I'm neutral, I say to you, shit, you're right. Because that pace of neutrality, is rare. I don't know the last time I felt that. This was recent. It was potent. Uh, it, it wasn't like the, the, what happened was not big in reference to things in life that happened. It was really a stupid thing, but it was a diff, a neutrality of action that I, it was different than anything else I'd ever done. So I can understand why it's only two minutes. I can also understand why it's important to do your work, inner work, why it's important to have these discussions. Because when we hear the reality of these things, maybe the next time it happens, an opportunity opens, we don't take it so seriously and we can step back, have a chuckle, and hey, man, man, we tap into neutrality and then we can ride it. And maybe instead of having two minutes in our life, I'll have four. <laughs> Can I throw something else out there? Yes. Is yeah. that maybe because you were about to delve into neutrality and you were already in that river of thought, that's why it was available to you in the last couple of weeks. Well, it's very interesting you say that because uh, Duncan was part of this. I uh, uh, Somebody sent me Deepak Chopra's 21-day meditation that they were doing. And I was in, it was like, it, it was so perfect. The meditation and the situation was so perfect. I have to tell you, I still like, I bawled and I was so uncomfortable all night. I wanted to scream. I wanted to make a battle, you know, like I, I was going to really get pissed off. But I just, you know, let it go. The next morning I felt better, listened to the meditation and poof, I was like, ding, 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 ding. I know what to do. So that's what was different. No. I, the meditation helped me. I was ready because synchronically I had support on many levels. And I think mm -hmm. now that you have touched this topic, you're going to have these opportunities. They were always there, but you never could see them before. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think the part that you're saying is of leaning into your emotions and allowing yourself to feel it fully is maybe what made the neutrality available as well. I'm Italian. If I don't get that explosion, I don't feel human. <laughs> I, I, just, I can do this for two minutes and then I'm like, I'm dying. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's a cultural thing, but it's, it, uh, I do feel that the charge was gone because I had allowed myself the emotions and it was easier to access the neutrality. Duncan, you wanted to say something. Yeah, right? just um, my experience with transcendental meditation for the last oh. six years, when I do it every, twice a day, every day, mm -hmm. within about three days, I don't even have to think anymore. It just happens. The words come out. The things I need to do, I just do. I don't need to make a list. I get along with everybody. It's like, but there's lots of different types of meditation. I'm not saying that's the one for you, but meditation or quiet time to connect with the field or whatever you want to call it is definitely worth making a habit out of because we'll all be better off and we'll have more moments like this. Yeah. I, I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it, not daily, but I'm still going through the meditation because they're short. They're about 15 minutes. If anybody wants to do it, I'll put you, well, I'll start the WhatsApp and you guys can do it. Yeah, Sarah, I'll, st I'll stick you on it. Yeah. No, it's fun. It was, it was good. 
That's good. So neutrality is where it's at, guys. That's what it's about. So inner work so that we can do that. Now, I do want to touch, and, and now the, the important piece is um, what's going on right now in the world of thoughts. And one of you, some of you, I think Sarah brought it up uh, with all this fear and COVID and all of that. Um, so we'll go a little bit backwards. So I just want to recap. So we've understood that thoughts is this, um, um, is something that comes from a higher, um, it comes from a higher level. It's brought in and then all the different forms on the planet elaborate these thoughts through our process of thinking. On its own, uh, we are just elaborating them and um, we only have a short time in our life span where we are actually creating thoughts ourselves. Um, and we discuss the element that, that's necessary for us to be neutral. We need to get away or heal these rivers or, 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 or conditionings that we've had so that we can be as neutral as possible. And that allows us access to our free will that then allows us real original thoughts that, uh, that we can actually put into the field. Um, I do want to just mention this about thoughts. So because we are mostly elaborating the thoughts, why is action, phys uh, uh, action important? Because this is uh, something we need to, I want to read to you. Uh, ta -ta -ra -ta -ra. Okay, so two things. Okay, so so in Dam and her, one of the things that they talk often about is action. Like when they build the temple, they build it by hand, uh, and this is the reason why. Okay, and this is at the bottom of page 50, 40, uh, 142, the last paragraph, to the first uh, paragraph. Um, of page 143. Okay, so keeping our focus in form on the human species, let us understand what elaborating thoughts mean for us. If we wanted to put it another way, we could say that we do not think, but that we remember having thoughts. In other words, the act of thinking is something immediate, a condition which our mind cannot cope with. Therefore, we can remember thinking, but cannot act directly in this way. This means, for example, that our minds cannot act directly on matter. Our minds cannot act directly on matter, but that we must use our hands instead. Our thoughts are actually acted out by our hands meaning they perform a physical action that effectively modifies reality. While we cannot do the same with mere mental speculation, this is why the concept of action has such a fundamental role in the Damanhurian philosophy. So that's important. So the Wright brothers, others were thinking about the airplanes, but the Wright brothers put it into action and materialized it in the material world. So because thoughts for us are not, thoughts are not created by us most of the time, our hope in this group is that we are going to increase that exponentially after this discussion, <laughs> uh, that we need, in order for us to have an impact on the material world, it's important that the the thoughts we have, we put into action. The projects you have, you need to put them into action. Okay, and Dam and her is a great example of that because they act out everything they say. They, they, they did the temple by hand, they paint the, the murals all over the place, they sculpt. They're always in the material world, acting out the ideas. Okay, so with that, 
we finished uh, the beginning part of this chapter and then what we have to go through, which is really important is, um, remember at the beginning, we mentioned that without thoughts, there's no life forms. Uh, so thought is the nutrient, uh, the food for life forms. And now I want to take you back uh, to page 140. Uh, or 139 uh, to 140 and 141. I'm going to read these to you because I think it's really important to understand the value. So we have an idea that uh, thoughts are brought to us by forms that are much more evolved. We are able then to elaborate these thoughts and in moments of free will, exercising our free will, we are also uh, creating thoughts. And the way that we impact, um, because we cannot, with our mind, create with those thoughts, it's important that we act with our hands, okay? And put uh, in and impact the material plane by action of the thoughts and ideas we might have, okay? So now let's talk about this important aspect of uh, and understand more deeply the fact that thoughts, without them, we don't exist, and the importance that we are always bathed, bathed in a rich environment of thoughts. Okay, so let's go to 139. It's the one, two, the third paragraph that starts with generally. Uh, are you guys all, have you followed the thread? Is okay? Yeah? Good. Give me a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Okay. Generally speaking, the function of thought allows for the evolution of living forms. In the absence of thought, these forms would be limited to mere survival instinct and would not be able to produce anything more than that. Because the currents of thoughts have well-defined flow paths, often following the flows of synchronic lines, because where there is life, there is also the need for thought. Not every world is watered by this energy. It is quite difficult and therefore unlikely that living beings can form in the absence of thought. So it's the soil for living forms throughout the galaxy. Another important observation is that the thought stream can also deviate from their set paths. Unlike the synchronic lines, which are immutable, we're going to talk about them later. And this can lead to a situation in which certain areas in space that have benefited from the streams of thought and have developed evolved forms of life can find themselves suddenly excluded from these streams. And this is where, yes, Elizabeth. Um, going back to the first um, paragraph, where it says that in the absence of thought, these forms would be limited to mere survival instinct. Um, what about animals? Do they animals have, thought, have think? Do the animals think? Yes, absolutely. They are part of the the chain, uh, and also they are also part of this. And remember on the timeline when the time. Um, chapter where we talked that the forms that have the more complexity or a level of evolution dictate the environment for the rest of the forms. So all of us that are the human forms are, are really important. They dictate how the, the other ones that don't have that level of evolution, um, they dictate how we dictate the direction and they follow but they're also elaborating the same thing. They're being fed by the way that we elaborate our thoughts. The animals also are fed. Remember, it's an ecosystem. It's a chain of, of food for okay. everybody, okay? And we're going to understand more now in pa page 140. I think it's better to read it because it's well written in the book. So the consequences would be quite serious in these cases. So we're talking about where there's a drop in thought. We don't get the same level of thoughts. What happens? So the consequences would be quite serious in these cases 
evolution would take a drastic fall and be reduced to nothing in a very short time. Let us try to imagine for a moment what would happen on our own planet if this were to happen. Mankind intellectual faculty would decline. Its memory, culture, technology, understanding, and everything that defines human civilization would be lost. In very, limit, in very little time, indeed, mankind would regress to the Stone Age, pre, uh, pre, uh, preserving only base survival instincts. According to some theories, our planet has already suffered similar blows, which brought about the loss of evolved species or civilization in the past. So this is Atlantis and other civilizations. Um, so if there is a deviation and thought stop flowing in our direction, a similar though less serious phenomenon would be a decrease in thoughts within the thought streams. In this case, the impact would be less dramatic as it would be proportional to the decrease in thought. So in the first example is, let's say in the planet Earth, we had a constant thought stream wave that was being sent our way. Then let's say something happened and it stopped. Guess what? Like what happened in Atlantis? We go back to the Stone Age. We don't have that nutrient, that nutrition. So we can't have thoughts. So that's one drastic event that can happen or the second one here that they talk about where maybe a, we're receiving a hundred percent of the thought stream what happens if we receive 80 percent okay so to give an uh, so to give an example uh, so a similar less serious phenomenon would would be a decrease in thoughts within the thought stream in this case the impact would be less dramatic as it would be proportional to the decrease in thought. To give an example, imagine a situation in which instead of having the normal amount of oxygen in our atmosphere, 21% to breathe, we find ourselves with the amount reduced to 15%. In this case, all our function would be slowed down due to the decrease in oxygen, and we would almost certainly also suffer a loss in quality uh, as well. So, so something quite similar happens with the decrease in the flow of thought. All our faculties would be attenuated and it would become more likely that basic low level behavior and action would emerge because our instincts would tend to push us to think only of our own survival needs. Um, and I wanna read on page 141 because I think it's important. Uh, do you guys understand that? Is that clear? Yeah. Sounds a lot like today. Well, I mean, we the environment that we're in and people not thinking. It's a different level. It's not that severe, but if you take that timeline, yeah, you're gonna we'll be done. Oh well, Duncan, that's what's happening. Yeah. It's mentioned here. Uh, so this sort of phenomenon is more common than a complete exclusion from the thought stream, which is actually quite rare. To add a little more detail on this, we are currently experiencing a reduction in the thought stream, which began towards the end of 2001 and is worsening slowly but steadily. Uh, if we analyze world events during this period, keeping this very important factor in mind, we can at this point interpret them within a historical context. Current estimate concerning this phase of decreased thought suggests a time frame of about of another five to six years of duration. Um, but what are the causes of such deviation or decrease in the stream of thought? Um, we have some ideas. Uh, so I think in 2001, there was one moment between 2001 for five, six years, there was a dip. And now, they give us ideas as to why. What I've understood from what I've read is thought streams and time are connected to each other. Remember when we talked about time, we talked about uh, the saturation of events and that there is this 
um, this fabric that's created from all the saturated events that happen in time, everything that we are experiencing in time creates part of the fabric of time. And that if there is a big tear in the fabric of time because of an event, well, the fabric is weaker there. Well, because the thought streams travel around the fabric of time, thought, the thought stream also becomes less because that fabric is not as, um, is, is, is torn. So because remember we are on a time island that ends 600 years in the future, we might be getting close to that fabric that's being, that's not the fabric of time that's not as taut and strong because there's a big tear happening. And so the thought stream is weaker because of, of the situation. So we can read it. Uh, and this brings me to living in community, uh, having these kinds of uh, conversations, high level conversations, we are helping the thought stream with these kinds of high level discussions. Why in Damanur they live in community so that they have so many people in an area having similar thoughts, maintaining a high level of thoughts that they are elaborating to help the weakness that's coming due to the fact that the fabric of time is uh, not as strong as we get closer to this, uh, uh, to the, the, the time island that we're on, the, the, the edge of the time island that we're on. Is that clear, guys? Is that okay? I'm going to read it. It's just, we, we, you know, we'll take another five minutes, 10 minutes just to read it so that it's uh, clearer. Did I lose you guys or is that okay? No, you got it. Okay. So let me just go. Uh, but what are the causes of such deviation or decrease in the stream of thought? Even though this is a complicated chapter in which there are no absolutes, there are still a series of elements that should be borne in mind. First of all, the relationship between time and thought. Since thought is distributed over the fabric of time, in chapter three, we saw how the, the, the fabric can be damaged or torn or weakened by time islands. All of these conditions are reflected in the stream of thought. Time is to thought what the circulatory system is to the blood. So when there are holes in the structure of time, we will find corresponding holes in thoughts and so on. We can also affirm the opposite. A deviation in the stream of thought can damage the surrounding time fabric. There is uh, no cause effect relationship between two, but rather one of concomitance. So if there's less thought streams, then the time fabric also gets weaker. So you see the interdependence of all these elements and you see the beautiful creation of all of these, all of these things. They're not abstract. They all fit perfectly into a beautiful um, picture for us. Not three-dimensional, but multidimensional as we're understanding more and more of the topics we can layer them you know i want to read this in, because it finishes with living in community and having uh, thoughts of a high level they are undoubtedly natural phenomenon that cause this situation which are catastrophic uh, catastrophic to life forms just as they are unnatural causes such as the incorrect use of time technology which can generate such paradoxes as to throw entire areas of time into confusion. So if you're gonna be a magician, you better know what you're doing. <laughs> Not to mention enemy, enemy technology, right? Because that's the Hogwarts Star Wars phenomenon, uh, with which these situations are created intentionally to destroy complexity. For example, a particularly advanced aspect of technology that works on time vegetation and time seeds could succeed in impacting the time space fabric and consequently the stream of thought. So they can be attacks on this area. So defensive tactics or remedies to deal with holes in the thought stream are practically non-existent, except on a very small scale. It is impossible to stock up on thoughts Okay, 
uh, uh, to stock up on thoughts. And while using time seeds to repair the damage to time fabric uh, could work, the level of control that we currently have over these structures is still far from adequate in order to use them for these purposes. So hopefully now, this was written 15 years ago, so hopefully they have better understanding today. So substantially, the best defense currently available to us is that of belonging to a population whose collective structure maintains sufficiently raised thought temperatures for a sufficiently long period of time, something that may diminish drastically on an individual level. So getting together and doing these talks is a contribution. Give yourselves a clap. <laughs> so that is um, the, the, the three quarters of the topic. So why, what is thought? Okay, we create a little bit in our life, but we are mostly elaborators. Because of that, it's very important we act. Uh, and we also now understand what is the risk of not having a good thought stream coming through. Yes, Cindy. So about the action, I was trying to find my notes. In the beginning of the pandemic, there was a world prayer. This Dr. Buttar and somebody else, and they uh, uh, organized it. And before we did it, he said, while we were meditating on these higher thoughts, we had to be performing an action. He did. Whether we, whether we were moving our hands, while we were saying a mantra, we had to be moving while we were me uh, elevating the thoughts. And I can't find my notes, but wow. it was more than just making the airplane. It's when you do that you have to be doing some kind of action while you're doing it that's beautiful yeah i can't find it but that's what they said i'll try and find it that's beautiful well there uh, yeah i guess he's tapping into the thought stream and the information is dee, 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 dee. <laughs> coming in <laughs> and now the question at the beginning where are the thoughts coming from page 145 so this is the Star Wars part of the book, <laughs> of the chapter. Guess what, guys? There are centers out there in the galaxy where they do thoughts preheating. They are working at creating the thoughts that they then send out throughout the universe. So there's actually a team of people from who knows what galaxy, what doing thoughts preheating. So if you want to read that, it's page 145 to 146. I'm not going to read it, but just to tell you that, well, do you guys want me to read it? You want me to read it together? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> like, I love this, I love this. Like, it's like, how, how fun is this? Guys, we get to have our own Hogwarts. <laughs> okay. It's the chapter, the, uh, the, the, this uh, section is page 145. The centers of thought pre-preparation, uh, pre thoughts preheating. <laughs> Did you ever think in your life you'd be reading stuff like this? I just want to know. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> and it's not just a voodoo book, but it's like, it's like, Community, 40 years in the making, they got a temple, they got substance, and we're reading this. This is like, I was made, born for this stuff. Okay, the centers of thought preparation deserve a moment of attention here. These are important structures that help us to sustain the evolution of certain worlds by following the directives of appropriate agencies within the human domain see human history from the magic point of view. We'll see that later. These are centers that would be defined as monastic in our world, places rather like monastery in which work known as thought preparation is carried out by appropriate educated beings aided by magic technology. This operation is a sort of pre-elaboration of thought which 
once prepared in this fashion, then goes to places, worlds that are being supported in their evolution at that moment. At that point, the elaboration of thought by the species that inhabit that world become much quicker and more effective. And in this way, the evolution of that species and planet is accelerated. To take an analogy, we can imagine that thought is water and that the elaboration is needed to increase the temperature by 10 degrees. In these centers, the water is preheated to five degrees. This example explains why these centers are also centers of thought preheating. So when the water reaches its destination, it requires less energy to reach the temperature of 10 degrees. And in that same way, thought then requires less energy to be elaborated. Of course, this is only a way of representing this idea. The function of thought are much more complicated than the use of energy needed to preheat water. And the work that takes place in this center is similarly much more complicated. In terms of the technology currently at our disposal, we should say in reminiscent of a spherical transmission to the synchronic lines. Da, 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 da. So we've got beings up there. So they might not need to do genetic modification all the time. They can just send us like elevated thought forms and hopefully we can take them and elaborate them. So that we have some help. We have some help. I do want to share this with you guys. Uh, I had a conversation with Crotolo and he said something interesting. Uh, he said to me, uh, right now with all the fear around what's been going on in these last four or five months, the thought stream is a bit toxic. And a I bit. A bit. <laughs> A bit toxic. A bit toxic. So, so, uh, so I asked, okay, so what does that mean? So I understand that they're, they're doing some kind of work to diffuse it, but it almost feels like a charge that will need to diffuse somehow. So hopefully it's not going to hurt people, but there is, there is, there, they, 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 we realized like what we just discussed that that's impacting that, that stream that we're tapping into. So be, really stay positive. He's on down, he's on down the road. He's on down, he's on down. We had a yellow brick road song that we thought we were gonna just take people along and say, chill, it's all okay, we're gonna be fine. Yes, Cindy. I thought Sunday he had something on his mind. I no. He said something about, somebody asked how steady is the timeline, and he, he kind of said that it's a little wobbly. Then he said something like that could happen. It seemed like he was worried about something to me on Sunday. Hmm. Was it that, what you were saying? Did you talk to him after Sunday? No, it was before. May, or maybe that was it too. It just seemed to me... He was concerned, I thought. Um, Cindy, oh, can I just? Yeah, Cindy, yeah. I don't think you have anything to worry about. And the reason is because, yeah, people can do horrible things, but we can also sing and dance and tell jokes like nobody else. So don't worry about it. Okay. We gotta, he's on down, he's on down. The road. That's what you gotta do. <laughs> Beth, you missed this, but we had a moment where we were like, what do we do? And so Sarah popped up and said, there's this great song. He's on down the road, you know, like down to the Wizard of Oz. And we grab people along the road and say, chill out, dude. It's all going to be fine. <laughs> so that's our, that's our motto. <laughs> He's on down the road. <laughs> so I hear something? Go ahead. Can I hear something? Yes. Okay. So, um... I, th I, I think I should send it to you, but I don't know if you got a chance to look at it. And uh, we, somebody sent this um, email to us about this woman that she calls herself the Oracle Girl. Oh, and yeah, I saw it. Jacqueline Hobbs. Okay. Um, there she talks about the timeline and she talks about how we 
need to elevate our spirits and we all come from love and that our DNA has been, um, you know, manipulated with. And it's a lot of it is similar to what we're learning here in our book. And I'm, um, but she's very spiritual and it's, she says that any time that you listen to her podcasts, she's activating us. So if anybody's interested, uh, she has some short videos and she is, says herself that she's not from here and that her, she's been here for a long time and she was told to stay put at one time and that her time would come for her to show herself and help us. And that she had, she and five of her other, I don't know, friends that are like her, um, are doing, are helping our planet. And she says that she's not from here, which is, you know, it's really, um, it made me think of Falco. That's why I'm sharing this, right? So it's, uh, it, it's really, it's, it's very, very inspiring in uh, how we need to come from love. Anything that we do and that the timeline, yes, it has broken and that we're on a new timeline and it's up to us to keep it up as long as we stay in that uh, happy place. So if anybody has a chance, I would suggest to take a look at her. She does, um, I forget what she calls them, where right now she's- Purification, purification. Uh, yeah, purification. She did a purification for friends today. Tomorrow she's doing one for, for Spain. And the next day she's doing one for Italy. It's, she doesn't want to call it meditation. She doesn't believe in gurus or gods and she doesn't want to be revered in any way because she says this is her job and this is what she was brought down here to do. So it's really, really interesting and um, really, I, know, I mean, it just gives me goosebumps talking about her because I find her that, you know, there's hope if we can do our thing, you know, just staying positive and uh, share our love. And when we run into somebody that we want to butt heads with, that it, it's hard or we don't have anybody to share. Like, you know, you're saying this community, this community, it's amazing because we find ourselves, Duncan and I, that we can't share what we're sharing with you and how we feel. So it's, this is beautiful. So thank you, Alessandra. Oh. So, and thank you everybody else or being and, part of it. And Elizabeth, uh, send me that link. You send it to me and then I can send an email to everybody. I also want to sure. share with you that even just holding space for each other like this, uh, having these discussions, opening our minds to these new topics, you are changing. You, you know, when you read these pages and you are touched and something, uh, you start to feel inside, you are also your own gurus. Like you are being transformed in this. That's why you're showing up. That's why you're coming to this because something is happening. It's just a little piece. And then you add layers of others. And, and also Crotalus talks some, when he, when he touches something you know, in me, I, I can see that I'm changing. So, no, no, send that along and I'll share it with all of you as well. Yes, Duncan. That, what Elizabeth was saying, this lady is the closest thing to the way I felt in Daminer since Daminer. And you know how I felt when I was there. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's, but her thing is, um, it's patterns that we have to get rid of. So she calls it purification. So I signed up for this and it's all donation. You can give nothing and she will do it. But there's no personal interaction. It's just, she doesn't give personal advice. It's just about how to awaken the instructions within us, which we read about in this book, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so, so I signed up for it and I do it every Saturday. And she said, when you sign up, tell me what patterns you want to work on getting rid of. 
So I thought about it and I wrote a few things. But it's, it's the power of thought because you thought of those, or because those thoughts came into your mind, put it that way, the way we're learning about it. Um, just the fact that you're writing this down is enough to get you to realize that, hey, that's starting to not play a big role in my life as it used to. This really worked. So it's, it's the power of thought and people that think like us, and it's all beautiful. I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs>